Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the fifth session, uh, the fifth hearing of the 179th period of session. The objective is to talk about human rights and instructive projects in Honduras. This hearing was requested by several organizations of the civil society. And today we also have the representation of the state. I would like to welcome both of them. And I would like to thank you for your involvement in this space. I am Antonia Orrajola. I am commissioner, reporter for indigenous rights. I am joined by the first vice president, Madame Julissa Bantilla, the second vice president, Flavia Piovesan, the former president and reporter for Honduras, commissioner Joel Hernandez, the reporter of cultural and social rights, Soledad Garcia, and the acting executive secretary, Maria Claudia Pulido, and the rest of the executive secretary who make this hearing possible. As I know that most of you already know, these hearings, in these hearings, the civil society have 20 minutes to make their statement. You will have a timer the, and I will try to let you know when you do not have much time left. Sometimes it's difficult to interrupt you, but please, I would ask you to, um, to use the time wisely. And uh, then the state will have the floor and then the commissioners or the executive secretary will uh, make the questions that they consider pertinent and then they will have some minutes to answer to our questions. You, We have interpretation available for those who need interpretation into English and we also have closed caption. This is something that we started including during this period and uh, so people with uh, hearing disabilities can hear the uh, the hearing i would like to give the floor to the civil society society please maintain your microphones closed whenever you are not speaking and try to maintain your cameras on and i will give the floor to the civil society thank you Thank you, Madam President, and good day to the Honorable Commission of the of the Honorable Commission. Thank you for the floor and the space. We would like to greet the Honduran State and the people who are here during this streaming. We want the warranty, the pertinent warranties to be granted, and we do not want retaliation against the people who are here in this hearing and their families and organizations, because this exposition implies a great risk. I am Liliana Caballero by the, on the Center of Justice and International Rights. And together with the organizations, we are going to expose our concerns and reports against the situation on human rights facing extractive projects in Honduras and how this model operates in today favoring the uh, this practice of deprivation. We are all also going to um show graphic support in honduras there are great concerns due to the civil political and environment situation and the human rights situations the high index of violence and impunity have made great impacts in the economy and the well-being of the population especially of those sectors that are marginalized and systematically attacked by the interests of the great powers of the country. Facing this old outlook, destructivism has consolidated itself as a model that prioritizes the natural resources as a main source of accumulation of wealth and benefits. This model reproduces looting, exploitation, and the indiscriminate destruction of several places and territories. Since the coup d'etat in Honduras, June 2009, a 
policy, economic policy based in the extractivism and exploitation of natural goods have been uh, put into place in the country. I will give the floor to Jose Ramon Gavilla. Good day. After six months of the coup d'etat, the government approved 48 projects for the hydroelectric licensing of project of energy projects. And the Honduran government had granted 302 licenses for the mining exploitation and 193 requests were in during the management in the Institute of Mines and Geology. Most of them were in the Department of Cortex, Alancho, Chaluteca, and Francisco Morazan. A report published by Oxfam documented that until July 2018, the government had licensed. 540 mining projects and 307 projects of energy generation. 137 of these projects are within indigenous or Afro-descendant territories, according to the mapping carried out by Fawcett in a report published in 2020. This has led to great tensions between the public and um, private interest and those who defend the territories and common gods in, in Honduras. The working group of the United Nations and other transnational companies after their visit in 2019 identified clear patterns linked to the extractive labor. First, the government has granted property titles to companies in areas used by agriculture communities and indigenous or Afro-descendants peoples. And the companies present reports or claims against those who oppose to them. And uh, these patterns led to violence and there were dozens of people killed and lots of people injured or detained. The third pattern is that the government grants operation licenses in protected areas which affect the cultural heritage and the uh, livelihoods of communities and indigenous people such as the case of the Tolupanos people in San Francisco Locomapa, which leads to massive displacements due to the conditions of the resources based on the extractive conditions. Cases such as the murder of the Lenca leader Berta Cáceres has evidenced a series of economic interests that involve different levels of officials, which let us see the uh, architecture of the deep deprivation. These connections between multinational companies and endurance are consolidated as a network that, manipul that manipulates laws and submit those who are political opposition to enormous risk. I will give the floor to Coritza Ortez from the Broad Movement for Dignity and Justice. The irregularities in the granting of concessions and the development of projects are not isolated cases, but they answer to a whole state structure that has favored private initiative. These have been the result of the little endeavors to trans to make the licensing proceedings more transparent and the, the reluctance by the state to respect and warranty the involvement processes and consultation processes for communities. We also note the um, the leveraging of legal vacuum and the absence of uh, impact assessments by in independent entities. The Secretary of State in the Secretary of Natural Resources and, Envir and Environment issued a ministerial, ministerial decree 1402-2018 uh, uh, through which it allows the authorities to make the information uh, reserved or confidential, which is a great uh, impact against the right to access to information. And it's a drawback in terms of the, of the struggle against the licensing processes. 
such agreement um, is opposed to local law and to the laws on access to public information. In 2018, the Ministry of Environment um, promoted the use of a digital platform through which those uh, proceedings are uh, conducted and this they do it to streamline the processes but this platform does not have the mechanisms that protect the truth of the information or or the technical uh, support of the request Facing that outlook and the weak institutionality, extractive companies exploit the resources and they exhaust water sources and they contaminate the environment. At the same time, we have forced um, displacements and poverty becomes worse. I will give the floor to Mario Rojas from the Committee for Free Expression, from the committee. Mario, I think you are muted. Now. We cannot hear you, Mario. I don't know if you have some internet issues or. Could we have some other member ex yet? I thank you. I think it's ready. Yes, thank you, Mario. Great. I'm sorry. The corruption and clientelism practices which are extended all throughout the country have led to the adoption of laws and policies that favor the interests not only of the main people of the national policy politics, but also of the financial, national, international elites that, dom dom that dominate the economy of the country. The National Congress of Honduras through the decree law numbers 376 2013 approved a series of contracts with uh, renewal resources and the municipality of Namasiwe has been gravely affected since it, it allowed the granting of of um, licensing contracts for, for over 40 years. And these projects of solar energy is, in, uh, is placed in the natural protected area, El Gigarito. And this is part from uh, the protected area since 1999. Several changes were done for the deployment of an extractive uh, policy in the benefit of the financial powers of the country. Since 2018, the government of Honduras accelerated the granting of uh, environmental licenses, first streamlining the processes of the Secretary of Natural Resources and Environment and for the extensions of these ones. And through the Ministry Agreement number 1402-2018, which classifies the technical studies, the um, environmental licenses and the placement of uh, uh, licensing by the law of classification of public doc documents related to the security. Since this national legal framework is very is highly permissive, we cannot use civil resources or uh, breach of amparos to 
stop the development of these mega projects and this leads to the uh, impact in the affected groups. Due to the corruption practice and the impunity, it has been possible to detect that the investigation and the attribution of responsibilities due to the presence and the irregularities of the management of mega projects generally get in highly advanced stages or once the projects are concluded that is the case of fraude sobre el cuarcade i will give the floor to delmi martinez from protection international mesoamerica Talking about an extractivist model implies noting which is the role of the companies, corporations, and private initiatives in those dynamics that have attempted against the Honduran peoples during uh, four years. There is no doubt that under these inter-American systems, there are um, state duties linked to the actings by non-state stakeholders such as the companies and the specific standards for the effective respect and protections of human rights in those contexts. Therefore, the states have to have have to be careful in its compliance and the companies have to pay attention so that their conducts are adequate to and respect the human rights as a legal consequence of the compliance of the obligations of the state in this context. The working group of the United Nations on human rights and transnational companies and other companies in its statement issued in August 2020 after its visits to Honduras in 2019 stress that the state should comply with the uh, with the duties and warranty and respect human rights and this means that companies have to operate with due diligence warranting the previsibility and probability of the latent risk and uh, they have to face the initiatives, the planning of the initiatives, they should anticipate risk and they should um, minimize environmental and social impacts. This, uh, there, there have been several reports by the or organized civil society in Honduras and in the international civil society, these together with a remilitarization context of the country, which is uh, addressed to the functioning of the armies. We have to call to implement common actions which must be consistent. The deprivation, displacements, and rate-rated violations of human rights are not going to be a means to justify development under colonialist and racist uh, terms. I will give the floor to Germán Chirinos. It has been evidence that the development of extractive projects in Honduras have uh, serious life conditions on the communities that uh, live in those territories. The violations to human rights in the framework of the development projects, the development of the projects, such as the access to the consultation and free consent processes are registered in 79% of the cases. The data also reveal sources and patterns of invasion to the territories and the attacks, the threats and estimations are reflected in 73% of the studied cases. The people who defend the the lands and the territories have become a subject of violence which uh, dominates in the country and they are systematically persecuted and re-victimized due to the lack of protection and it has been overlapped due to the impunity and the corruption of the institutions in the search of justice. In Chotuleca, the Territorial struggle is developed due to the installation of photovoltaic uh, parks, farms, and this is the case of the mega project Los Prados. E until date, there are two fiscal requirements against 12 leaders. We also 
uh, name copying and broad movement that even though they have uh, protection measures granted by this commission since 2016 and 2018, to date, they keep on uh, reporting the persecution and uh, harassment against them due to their work and defense on human rights, especially linked to the defense of the land and the territory. Also, the recent uh, facts against Mas Vida, who denounced, who reported the uh, murder of Marvin Damian Castro Molina, who was a member of the coordination. The, he, he was a beneficiary of the collective protection measures granted by the National Me Protection Mechanism since January 2019. Eight advocates in Rio Guapinol are still deprived of their liberty after one year and a half that they were arbitrarily detained. The working group on arbitrary detention of the United Nations qualify this detention as contrary to the standards of human rights since it it was not based in any motive or and it recommended its liberation its release we also have a string re, uh, seriousness situation in which the communities garifunas and the triunfo de la Cruz leave eight months after the disappearance of five of its advocates, we cannot know where they are and there are no mechanisms to facilitate the open dialogue and the openness to collaboration of pertinent investigations. This country uh, killed 20 people, advocate of human rights in 2020, and 15 of them were linked to their uh, work to defend the land and their territory. The advocates are not only figures, we are history, we are life, and we have resistance. I give the floor to Juan Lopez from the Comité Municipal de Defensa de los Bienes Comunes. The lack of protections to human rights defenders is because of the impunity in the country. The report of the special rapporteur on the situation of human rights defenders said that in 2018, more than 90% of the murders and violations of human rights remain in, impun in impunity. And the figure reaches 97% in those cases related to human rights defenders. This has led to a high level of distrust on the justice system, and also a reduction in the number of official reports, partial information, and the lack of regard for the reality of the country by the authorities. Up to 2018, only 12 uh, rulings were granted for the over 100 deaths of farmers registered in the Bajo One between 2018 and 2014. Also, there are, it's possible to see that there are delays by public ministries to integrate the investigation folders and files, and many judges uh, are uh, issuing judges against the principles of impartiality. In general, civil organizations have observed an increase in the criminalizations of human rights defenders, and there is evidence that there is a high impurity in cases of attacks against these defenders. However, in spite of the many reports, the authorities of the state of Honduras have not made significant changes to protect the rights and to guarantee life, security, and integrity of those who defend those rights. Uh, rulings by the Inter-American Court of Human Rights, reports by specialized organizations within the United Nations, academia, civil society organizations have talked about the deaths uh, to the victims that are direct or indirect, indirect of the violations created by the extractivist industry in their territories. Uh, in order to conclude, I would like to give the floor to my colleague Lorena Ruiz from the Committee of Families of Detained or Disappeared People in Honduras. The, we request the state first to abstain from the use of criminal law to criminalize and digitalization of human rights defenders and those who defend the land and the territories and social leaders uh, through the uses of crimes such as trespass, illegal association, among others, to guarantee the legitimate investigations and an impartial actions uh, following the 
uh, law, especially when those uh, proceedings involve uh, environmental leaders that are victims, such as the case of David Castillo, to reform or change the legislation to avoid that there are unbased or unfunded trials against those defenders of human rights in the mar in the framework of uh, company activities or regarding extraction, exploitation, or development and guarantee the access to information according to human rights uh, standards regarding the law, the law of access to information as well as ministerial and policy, public policy agreements to strengthen the mechanism of protection of human rights and a differentiated risk analysis as well as the granting of adequate protection measures, especially for those cases that involve defenders of lands and territories. Six, comply with international obligations regarding the surveillance of the actions of extractive companies and industries, but putting an end to uh, this structure of deprivation, violence, and impunity. Thank you. Thank you. The clock is now and it's not here but you comply with the time thank you very much for that now i would like to give the floor to representatives of the state honorable commissioners and distinguished uh, petitioners and public we would like to greet all of you on behalf of the state of honduras we are appearing before this hearing named situation of human rights regarding the extractive projects in honduras within the framework of the 179 sessions of periods uh, my name i belong to the secretariat of human rights of the state of honduras I would like to apologize because the general prosecutor of the nation is not here and she will not be able to be here because of health issues and she uh, authorized me to appear before you today. Uh, together with me is a delegation that includes the Secretary of the State and also the Secretary of Human Rights, the Institute of Ge Geology and Mining and also the Council of Energy and also the Office of Security, and that is all the institutions that are related to this topic. We would like to present uh, first-hand information and to talk about the particular situation of this thematic hearing based on the following aspects. First, we would like to talk about the background information and institutional actions taken into consideration extractive projects. We would like to talk about the legislation of Honduras related to international standards. Third, the situation of the defenders of lands and natural resources. And fourth, the actions of the companies according to the guiding principles for companies and human rights. Uh, Madam President, I would like to give the floor to lawyer Oscar Villin, that is also the director of the Secretary for the Environment of Honduras. Good morning, taking into consideration the fact that the thematic uh, hearing is about extractive projects and processes related to renewable energies and the environment, for example, uh, linked to other sectors like tourism and agribusiness, we would like to say that the legislation establishes that in order to promote the development of the country and to supplement the actions of the actors of those uh, resources, the state should plan the precise objectives and should also plan the mechanisms in order to promote this development. In 2010, a law was passed in order to prepare the national plan for Honduras in order to approve the country vision for until 2000 and 38 and also the plan for 2022. The state has implemented the law of uh, simplification of public administration in order to simplify and to make a proceedings more simple so that all the agencies within the state follow efficacy regulations in order to guarantee the enjoyment of the rights of all the interested parties or stakeholders. 
since 2018, the Secretary of Natural Resources and Environment has been working according to this law. The granting of mining concessions require the following of se several guidelines that take into consideration several aspects in order to evaluate the social impact and also to take into consideration the environmental management project. We work with a group that includes local governments and the central government. They have to present reports to comply with environmental measures. Now, I would like to give the floor to the Sec General Secretary of the Honduras Institute of Geology and Mining. Good morning. Madam President, and good morning to all those here. Regarding the activities of the mining sector, it's important to mention that in 2017, uh, 250 mining concessions were uh, granted, 143 were regarding exploration, and 111 for the exploitation, 24 metals, and 91 for non metals. And they have been distributed in the following departments, 53 in Cortez, 25 in Olancho, 38 in Onteca, and 23 in Santa Barbara. Regarding the context, some of the mining conflicts in recent years have to do with the lack of processes of socialization in the areas of the projects. And we recognize that dialogue and negotiations are the only means to overcome the structural issues there. The state of Honduras has started several actions that are for, to prevent and to repair. For example, uh, the creation of a working group to the for the resolution of mining conflicts with the mining authorities in order to create dialogue spaces with institutional means that would lead to agreements between companies, the state, communities, municipal authorities, civil society organizations, and representatives from civil society. The carrying out of monitoring to guarantee labor security in order to verify the technical and legal measures in order to mitigate the impact on the environment. Regarding that, the Institute is monitoring the quality of air, the quality of water and solid waste and has issued several recommendations and corrective measures. Up to now, we are keeping the monitoring in four mining uh, projects. The execution of several proceedings to provide social compensation that account for 7.8 million if uh, the leaders and we are trying to monitor the agreements established in 2012. We are also taking into consideration the importance of the context in the area of San Andres that is located in the municipality of Union in the department of Copan regarding all those uh, regulations regarding property and mining. It has been ordered to suspend several administrative files because those uh, mining projects overlap in the genius communities. We need to have an instrument and a legal foundation so that there is a prior consultation and informed consent, um, consultation process in order to guarantee the rights of the indigenous peoples of Honduras according to national legislations and the 169 convention of the ILO. In 2021, we rejected the request of Eco Mining Company to extend the mining concession in the area of ASP2, that is in the municipality of Epoa and Colón, because it's within the National Park Montaña de Montaderos. We decided we base our rejection in Article 48 of the National Law on Mining and on international standards regarding the situation of other areas regarding their competencies and the attributions of the mining authority. We need to highlight that even though we grant the mining right to exploitation of eco mining company, the legal proceeding was according to the general law of mining from 1998, that request did not occur within the main area of the National Park. In 
December 2014, uh, the Secretariat of Natural Resources granted the environmental permit for the area named ASB and the mitigation measures were also established. It's important to mention that the Commission values and acknowledges that in spite of the challenges uh, the structural challenges that exist, the state of Honduras is adopting timely and adequate measures to mitigate the conflicts in the mining sector according to its obligations. Now I would like to give the floor to architect Vera Martu de Cano, that is the chief of the social responsibility and environmental responsibility unit. I would like to give her the floor now. Good morning. Regarding the activities to create renewable sources of energy, in 2017, the Secretary of Energy is created, and this is uh, to combine regional, international, and local projects. We want to promote the sustainable development of the sector by harmonizing the use of uh, renewable resources in order to mitigate the impacts on the environment. It's important to mention that the power generation through renewable energies pre presents the 50% of the energy, uh, energy grid of Honduras. We would like to increase 80% the power generation uh, with renewable energies. The protection of the environment is fundamental and all the procedures need to comply with the environmental guidelines established in national and international legislation in the area of human rights. It's also important to mention that the energy sector faces several challenges that are difficult to foresee and we are in a transition process in order to prevent future conflicts. However, according to Article 2 of the American Convention, the state of Honduras, through this Secretary of the State, has adopted several measures taking into consideration the interaction between natural resources, the environment, and the populations of the areas where energy projects are uh, happening. We need public projects that cover the issues, and we need to respond to the demands of the involved parties immediately taking into consideration international legislation, for example, the SDGs regarding the 2030 agenda, due diligence of companies and human rights of the ILO, the standards ISO 2006, ILO standards, everything that has to do with the standards of the, and also investment uh, standards among others. For that process, we have had meetings institutional meetings in nor and also with civil society organizations and cooperation agents. Also through the unit of uh, environmental social responsibility we're carrying out projects to address conflicts. And through those projects, we have been able to investigate and we are waiting for judicial resolutions by competent authorities of some of the conflict, conflicts. We are working on the national energy policy to 2050. We would like to create this with the participation of all the sectors involved, and it will include a chapter regarding indigenous peoples and Afro-descendants people. We also will be working together with the communities in order to establish the levels of feasibility of uh, some projects within indigenous communities. We would like to increase the coverage of power e that now represents or accounts for 87%. We would like also to work with the neighborhoods and we would like to bring energy and electricity to many families in order to guarantee their well-being. We are also having monitoring controls in different mining companies in order to see the processes that are, are uh, having. And we are also trying to determine the social impacts in the stages of exploration, building, exploitation, and closure of the projects. The, we have several projects like Icaro 1, Icaro 2, and others. We are preparing a guide regarding community actions in uh, power generation projects in order to establish guidelines for the communities when it comes to the power generation with the participation of local actors. We want to improve local governance and sustainable developments, and we want to reach agreements between the parties. We're 
doing this process in order to include a human rights perspective. And we would like also to call or to include the opinions of civil society organizations and other actors, for example, indigenous peoples, central governments and local authorities, academia, international organizations, the private sector, banking and NGOs. We are also working to prepare protocols of prior consultation through international cooperation for power projects. Uh, we are now preparing the terms of reference for that process, taking into consideration those ideas. On August 28, 2019, the group of working regarding human rights and companies and other companies during their in local visit said that they are interested in the fact that the Secretary of Energy is consulting other groups in order uh, or with regard to prior consultation. They have checked how other countries have improved their prior consultation processes. Some companies after social conflicts have improved their processes in order to guarantee a better prior consultation in the area of due diligence and human rights. Now I would like to give the floor to the subsecretary or undersecretary of the Secretariat of Human Rights. Thank you, President and Commissioners of the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights. Now I would like to talk about the prevention of conflicts and the promotion of some principles of human rights of United Nations in order to monitor and to prevent the situations of human rights and the violations of human rights and the conflicts we have followed up, the, we have been done the following actions. We are trying to install different groups. We are also working with the communities, especially with those that have uh, environmental conflicts. We have created several tables in order to prevent social conflicts. We are trying to address also tables to solve conflicts. We are also providing technical assistance together with the working group of the United Nations. We had an event on um, May 2019 in order to implement the guiding principles by the companies. After the recommendations provided by the working group, the state has seen that it's important to guarantee the compliance of those guidelines by including all the actors in a intersectional space, including the, high, uh, the Office of the High Commissioner of the United Nations and also the Institute of Human Rights. We have had several bilateral meetings uh, taking into consideration international and national principles. Up to now, we have had several meetings regarding guiding uh, principle. We have trained over 36,000 people in different sectors regarding the legislation of Honduras, regarding extractive projects. We should say that there are standards that respond to international standards and human rights. For example, the law to protect uh, human rights defenders, journalists, communicators, and justice operators. We have also the general law on the environment. We have the law on municipalities. We have the law on transparency and access to public information, the law on citizen participation, the general law on mining, among others. In the international area, the state of Honduras says that we have ratified several conventions like the Convention 169 of the ILO, the Inter-American Convention of Human Rights, the International uh, Covenants of Human Rights of the United Nations, the Protocol of San Salvador, and also the Convention on Social Diversity, among others, regarding transparency processes and access to information in order to uh, determine the reach of the impact. We consider many of the complex uh, are because of the lack of trust or worth information regarding the impact on the communities. The state of Honduras is aware of this conflict and we, through the Institute of Access to Public Information after a resolution in 2019, we decided to reject to classified as confidential information, many of the processes regarding to min mining concessions, and we guarantee the access to public information to those communities that are interested. And through our system of public information and the transparency law, in order we have designed 
we have trained public officials in order to be able so that they are able to address the different requirements regarding public information. We also have a system of public information available online regarding other areas and taking into consideration risk situations, the state of Honduras through the system of protection also is protecting three cases that are related to the defense of the environment and the territories, especially in relation with mining projects and forestry projects. And we have uh, granted protection and prevention measures. The community of Empresa Minera Pinales, the Empresa Minera Binolza, the Movimiento Ambientalista del Sur, Mas Vida. We have also promoted several um, protection measures for the case of Malvin Castro. We are also trying to promote uh, everything that has to do with forestry exploitation. We have established an institutional table in order to address these structural problems, especially after the facts according to Sata 13. And we have also an arrest order. And we are also trying to provide security forces protection uh, for the communities. Regarding the facts that have occurred, the section of the police is carrying out investigations regarding the cases of Mr. Mejia, Banques, and Malvin Castro Molina. And the state has adopted timely measures according to the diligence, according ensuring in Articles 5, 8 of the uh, San Jose Protocol. Regarding guiding principles regarding human rights and companies, the state uh, would like to tell the honorable commissioners that the company industrial sector measures have been adopted in order to mitigate the things mentioned by civil society organizations. Regarding the private sector, the Honduras Council for Private Companies approved some guidelines in order to prepare a plan of action in order to improve the capacities in the area of human rights. We also provided training in human rights, due diligence in the area of companies, and also the articulation of intersectional efforts. Also, through the Association of Industry, the state of Honduras launched a policy on human rights. And the state of Honduras is aware on the, of the importance of working in an articulated way in order to guarantee the human rights. And we would like to request the commissioners to take into consideration the measures of prevention and reparation and the guarantees of non-repetition. We would like to say that our actions are following the international standards and human rights that are enshrined on the Pact of San Jose. First, also we would like to say to the uh, civil society organizations that we need to strengthen dialogue processes according or following the uh, through the platforms that are available in order to guarantee the involvement of all those stakeholders. Thank you very much. Thank you to the representation of the state. I will give the floor to the civil society. The state went one minute further so as to maintain equal conditions. And I will give the floor to the Honduran rapporteur and the rapporteur of uh, human rights defenders, Commissioner Joel Hernandez. Thank you, Madam President. Good day to everybody. I would like to thank you for the number of uh, civil organizations who requested this, uh, this hearing and a very uh, at a greeting, a special greeting for Berta Suniga, who is here today. I would also like to thank the presence of the state. It, would, it was very interesting to hear the testimonies given by both of the parties, but also what the Honduran state has been doing for the corporations, companies to respect human rights. And undoubtedly, there are measures that have been adopted. What the state 
presented is a set of actions and uh, conventional obligations that have been adopted all throughout the years. But we cannot deny that there is a deficit that we do not see in the requesting organizations as space of satisfaction facing the way in which the extractive activities are being carried out. And I say this not based on this hearing where the testimonies have been multiple, but I say it based on what I've been hearing as a reporter and all throughout these three years, this is a uh, recurrent topic in the agenda of human rights and it's a topic that uh, is in the country report that the commission drafted when it visited the country in 2018. So I think there are elements that are missing in order to to reach this satisfaction. The commission understands the importance of making progress in the economic and social progress and development of the peoples. It's a right that they have to be able to make progress in their development, social and economic development. And it values that within these development processes, the development of renewable energy pro uh, projects are being implemented. I find it interesting that you have a plan uh, to 2050 in order to increase renewable energies. That is what should be done in these times where all states should be advancing and should be making progress in terms of renewable energy. But what is worrying is that when all these economic actions, economic development actions and of generations of renewable energy are not carried out pursuant to human rights frameworks that have to be observed. It's clear by the information presented here that there are plans that there are measures and there are laws but even so there are situations that make us see that the those laws and protocols should be effectively implemented i would just like to highlight uh, an item the concern of the commission on the Bajo Awan and the advocates of Wapinol reflect that there are activities, extractive activities, that are not being carried out based on the prior uh, and free consultation. And on the other hand, there are no protection measures granted to environment defenders so there is a deficit it, that evident that deficit is evident there is a gap between the explanation that the state granted here and the actions that were effectively taken on the ground that is what after hearing both parties i can make the conclusion that all the measures designed should be effectively applied, applied in practice and the number of incidents should be reduced until the risk factors to human rights advocates is eliminated. And when there are vulnerabilities and there are um, attempts against the life and the integrity of human rights advocates, then the authorities should investigate with due diligence and the legal, the judicial authorities should sanction and uh, the, respond, the people responsible and reparate the victims. That is, we need concrete outcomes, let's see. I am going to focus and conclude making reference to three questions that I would like to hear. I would like to hear both parties and I will close, then I will wrap up. 
For me, it's really important to strengthen the dialogue between the authorities and social civil organizations. There is a unity of uh, energy secretary and there are several dialogue tables, but I would like to hear the organizations present herein so as to see how these dialogue tables work and which are the mechanisms that can carry that can be carried out so that there is an authentic dialogue between the authorities in charge of the licensing granting and the Afro-descendant and indigenous communities. I have also heard, not here in this hearing, but in other testimonies about the mechanism of protection of human rights defenders. I think it's important and the secretary in charge of the Office of Human Rights should talk about the protocols, the existing protocols for those people that defend the environment, which are the protocols activated once there is an emergency. And finally, I would also like to hear which is the progress made in the approval of the plans of uh, corporations and human rights. That is part of our recommendation of our report. We heard the work you have been doing based on the principles, the basic principles and the recommendations that you received from the United Nations Working Group. But I would also like to know which is the um, the current status of the plan. I cannot see a representative from the general attorney office in the representatives of the state. I would like to know the advances made in terms of the um, based on the the. Uh, murder of Berta Cáceres. I would like to give the floor to the Vice President, Madame Julissa Mantilla. I would like to greet the organizations present herein and the representatives of the state as well. I would like to briefly, uh, since the commissioner already asked about the protocol, along those lines, I would like to make a question whether there is a differentiated treatment for the case of women who are defending uh, advocates for the lands and environments as the commission has already seen it in 2017 there is an approach or there is an a gender impact which is a very great impact so I would like to know whether there are protocols or specific laws. You have already talked about the legal framework and the prevention of criminalization. I would also like to know whether there were specific measures to prevent, for instance, the libel of defender women, especially uh, about their uh, personal life and in the case of sexual violence, which uh, many women suffer. The question is for the state, but if the organizations have something something to contribute, you're welcome. I am also rapporteur of elderly people, and I would like to know whether you have information on women and men, elderly people who are being threat, uh, threatened because they are defending the territory and environment. And you also talked about forced displacement. I would like to have information of this intersectional vision, what is happening with uh, women and with elderly people and the particular risk attached to it. Thank you, Commissioner Mantilla. I will give the floor to Commissioner Flavia Piovesan. Thank you. Mr. Mrs. Madam President, I would also like to greet the civil society organizations and the representations of the states. I have two questions. One is addressed to the state and the other one to the civil society. The first one has to do with uh, the companies and human rights. We heard from the state that based on this tractivist model, there were 254 
mining license is granted. We also heard the concern and the reports made by the civil society taking into consideration not only the conclusions and recommendations of the working group of the United Nations when it visited the country in August 2019, but also our visit as the commissioner Joel Hernandez was uh, mentioning when we were in August 2018 in Honduras, one of the recommendations was to develop a national plan of on companies and human rights together with our ESCR um, reporter Soledad, we uh, to develop its standards in and to adopt the protocol developed in Quito in November 2019. So I would like to get to know how this uh, discussion is being given in terms of the due diligence of human rights and the human rights impact assessment. This means how they are approaching this topic of the impact of the extractivist model in terms of human rights and the concern of the country rapporteur in relation to the democratic element, let's say, when there is a process of prior consultation to take into consideration the duties and the uh, convention of the ILO 169. So that is the first question to the state, taking into consideration the duty of the state to protect human rights, avoiding the um, or preventing third parties to violate the rights of, uh, of the defenders and to have adequate access to justice and to justice uh, mechanisms and avenues. My second concern in my capacity as a reporter for LGTBI uh, rights, I am really concerned because we have we, we have a, a, an area where there is a disproportionate use of the death of uh, the murders. We have the data provided by the uh, environmental advocates, but I can imagine that LGBTBA advocates as well. So there is not a warranty and there is no uh, there is a, a abuse of the force, and we also have the use of impunity. So the state does not investigate with due diligence and warranty justice for the victims and their relatives. And I'm concerned about two aspects. The civil society, even the state, highlighted the light to access of information and transparency and the civil society has critical contributions in relation to this law. And I would like to get to know which is the concern of the civil society in terms of the implementation of this law. And I'm also concerned about the institutional topic of uh, the uh, judiciary because I would like to know more about the re, well, the complaint that there was no independence or judiciary independence and for the inter-american commission there are inter-american standards and judicial warranties that should be complied with thank you madam president I would like to give the floor to the Special Rapporteur of Economic, Social, Cultural, and Environmental Rights. Thank you, Madam President. I would like to thank for the information sent by the State of Honduras and by the petitioner organizations. It's very important and it's a priority for my mandate in the Commission. However, the rapporteur, the country rapporteur and the vice presidents of our Commission have mentioned several of the questions that the Commission has 
first, I would like to uh, remind everybody, as me, uh, Commissioner Piavesan was saying, the Commission and the Special Rapporteurship on Economic, Social, Cultural, and Environmental Rights, we have a very important tool that the uh, state of Honduras and the uh, civil society should know about that this report on companies and human rights. We made a lot of effort together with the Danish Institute and with the UNOCHR. We are at your disposal if you need technical cooperation regarding uh, the uh, uh, report. After the visit of 2020 in our report from 2019, we made recommendations regarding the need to have an action plan of human rights in Honduras and regarding companies. And we also made a special mention regarding the need to adapt the legislation of Honduras to the Inter-American Universal Standards. And that is also a question that I have because I think it's very important to have action plans at a national level, but also that they should align to the articles of the Pact of San Jose. We need to adapt the legislation that needs to be amended. And I also have questions regarding energy projects. The country rapporteur already mentioned this. I think that we believe that we need to fight the climate change, but we need also to have a fair transition and we need to consider the human rights and gender equality perspective for that. I'm also concerned about the situation of environmental defenders in Honduras. They have one of the iconic cases in the region that shows how dangerous it is to defend the environment. And I would like to know more about this current situation of environmental defenders in Honduras, especially during the pandemic. And that is another concern that I have. I would like to see how the pandemic is worsening the situation of defenders. And also I would like to second Commissioner Mantisha. I am especially concerned about how those situations impact on human mobility. Everything that has to do with this uh, forced displacement, but also migration, for example, those so-called caravans uh, that because they are because inequality and poverty are a great problem in Honduras. So I would like to know about that. And in order to conclude, I would like to ask the state of Honduras if they have plans regarding the signing and the ratification of the agreement of Escazú that responds to all the questions that we have mentioned during this hearing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Special Rapporteur. I have also a couple of questions. One of the issues mentioned by civil society organizations is the acceleration of the concessions of mining uh, licenses and everything that had to do with environment that has already been mentioned by my colleagues, but I'm not sure Regarding the process of granting um, mining concessions, there is also this lack of technical information or the reserve, the reserve of technical information. They say that that information cannot be reserved because that affects citizen participation and all the standards of free and prior consultation. But I don't know why there is technical information regarding these projects that is not being shared with everybody. And that is what I understand after the presentation of civil society. I'm also concerned about the complaints regarding uh, the use of private security forces to protect investment projects. I would like to remember the states that there are standards for this. It is an iconic case. That is the case Saraj against Ecuador. The state was held responsible for the actions of security or private security to protect a, a specific project. And I would like to, whether I would like to know if this is a permanent trend. Uh, for companies and private agents, because and regarding the pressure of prior consultation, when we did the in local visit, this was something that led to a lot of discussion with the organizations. The former reporter of indigenous peoples of the United Nations also did a visit, and that led to a technical letter regarding the prior consultation process and. I know that these are the fundamental issues that need to be discussed. 
the bill does not comply with all the inter-American standards of um, prior consultation. And also I would like to have information regarding what we did after the visit and the report of the visit is that there were criticism regarding the lack of a wide consultation process for this project. Some organizations were consulted, but not all the organizations were consulted. So I would like to know if we have more information on this topic. That is one of the uh, things that the commission identified during the visit to Honduras some years ago. The representation of the state talk about the rafting of protocols for consultation. I think that would be a very important decision. I would like to understand why those prior consultation processes only exist for the energy sector. And I would like to know if the state of Honduras is trying to establish uh, prior consultation processes for all these sectors or only for the powers energy sector and also we know that we have initiative in different uh, countries of the region in which uh, these several indigenous peoples and Afro-descendant people have their own consultation processes, but within their own autonomy and self-determination regarding the plan for companies and human rights. I agree with the observations made by my colleagues, especially regarding consultation processes. The state reported a set of workshops and training sessions that I think it's important. I know also would like to understand the process of free and informed prior consultation in spite of the training sessions, and that is not the same. So I want to have a clarification there. Commissioner Hernandez also talked about the murder of Berta Cáceres and the need to continue with investigations in this regard. And organizations also said that the community of Rio Blanco, the Lenca people are still subject to harassment and threats. The commission has been monitoring the situation. And I would like to connect this with what has been said by, um, by my colleagues, that is a system of protection of human rights defenders. I also have some concerns regarding a differentiated approach, especially for indigenous and Afro, peoples. We would like to know if there is a differentiated approach for human rights defenders. This is a fundamental issue and we see that we have the same issue across the region and we would like to know if you are having a differentiated approach for indigenous peoples because that has a direct impact on the situation of threats that we that is has been mentioned during this hearing. Thank you very much. And now I would like to give the floor to civil society organizations. You have 13 minutes. I will give you an extra minute because the state during its previous presentation had an extra minute and the state will have 12 minutes to answer and to make comments. We have made several questions. So we understand if if not possible to answer all the questions during the hearing, you can also send us all the information uh, if you have any questions and you can answer those questions in written. Who is going to use the floor? in the civil society organizations. Thank you, Madam President. I will invite Jose Ramon and, and Nivia to, uh, to take the floor and then we're going to keep on seeing whether we have time left. Thank you, Madam President. Well, we have heard a series of questions that you have, but we agree with many of you in the sense that Honduras is in debt in terms of the uh, response uh, to the civil society. We are requesting, we are requiring justice to be done and the, we are requesting them to stop the criminalization of the advocates so that there are no further uh, murders against the leaders of the territories. There are 
about new 20 leaders that have died during the last few years and the state still uh, did not uh, investigate and in between 2010 and 2020 that decade can be called the the decade of military of um, extractivism and it is also characterized by the militarization and the peaceful manifestations and the demonstrations of the peoples are uh, criminalized and even though the functions are to preserve sovereign sovereignty, we observe a pattern of granting security to hydroelectric companies and mining companies and we have lived that, we have suffered that in the different communities. The mining projects, the information about those mining projects is not uh, being provided to the different organizations. I was listening about the reserve of Botadero and there is a recent study made by Oxfam which determines that the core area was modified so as to grant a license to the national transnational mining company, the Abra Mineral project in Minosa Sacual, which, which violated the rights of people and it was taken to court in the case Cerro Cementerio where there were the uh, remainings of the relatives of over 1500 families and in other areas there are licensings there are metallic mining licenses in Can Municipio de La Paz and in other places there are several violations to these human rights i would like to give the floor to the rest of my colleagues mario you can have the floor thank you in terms of the access to public information, which has to do with information relating to the different technical aspects that have to do with uh, licenses, I would like to remind the state that in 2019, 2020, the state secretary in the environmental office asked the Institute of Access to Public Information, the reservation of the information regarding the technical characteristics of uh, environmental license. Even though it is true that the Institute through resolution 153 on, of uh, 2019, um, rejected, partially rejected the secrecy of this information, the state keeps on requesting the classification of the information that has to do with technical aspects as to the exploitation, mining exploitation licenses. As to the public information access law, as from 2016, there is an unconstitutional um, remedy which was present which was filed and through resolution of the uh, constitutional court with divided votes because two of the justices of the court declared uh, rejected the remedy it is in the uh, supreme court and it is there is a decision decision pending due to the divided vote of the constitutional court this remedy was filed in 2016 and to date to, to, we do not have a resolution on by the justice by the judiciary as to the criminalization of uh, demonstrations it is important to mention two benchmark cases on criminalization of advocates of the territory and environment. The first one is the case of Reitoka, in which the uh, general attorney office requested information to the army 
uh, information relating to people or to the military members which took part in uh, violent eviction in which they violated human rights during a demonstration uh, made by the uh, habitants of Reitoka who opposed to the uh, mounting of uh, a hydroelectric company in the area. This is uh, kept, uh, this is safeguarded in the law of uh, national defense. However, the investigation of the general attorney office is not an, a thorough investigation so as to determine which were the, who were the masterminds or who were the perpetrators of the violations to human rights. And what is even more serious, there are cases against high rank officers of Reitoka and the resolution or the sentence of the judges were the crime for abuse of authority and injuries. But apart from this, the state of Honduras, the justice that was in charge of the case, well, declared herself uh, not competent so as to get to know or to, or to deal with this case because this case should be uh, dealt with by the military forum. We believe that this decision of the justice of, uh, of this declaration, well, I think that it, it does not comply with the human rights uh, standards as to the Wapinol case, I would like to say that eight environmental defenders are deprived of their liberty uh, one year, have been deprived one year ago, and the working group of the United Nations has already recommended and has ordered the immediate release of the advocates of the Wapinol River due to this arbitrary detention, and it has been, this detention has been imposed as a punishment for the defense of the territories. The advocates were taken to maximum security prisons, which ignores the minimum laws on the privation of liberties. Thank you, Mario. Bertita, I don't know if you want to intervene. Yes, thank you. Good day to everybody. I would like to thank you for the information that you have provided during this hearing. Since Copin, since as Copin said, we did not have knowledge as to the actions the state has taken up to now. So for us, it's really valuable to get to know that we are really affected by that ministerial decree, which imposes the um, reservation or the classification of the information. We are really concerned about the, um, the generation of uh, power or, or renewable power, which has promoted the systematization of the organizations organizations such as COPIN and many others. Outside of the information that has been posed, we are worried about the fact that in practice we haven't seen any structural and or substantial changes, even though Honduras has been um, has been pointed at due to their cases on uh, violence to human rights in the area. We have posed a process of the WACAR where 16 officers of the state have been taken to court for the granting of environmental licenses, licenses and that was a pattern that was followed for different environmental projects. And even though the endeavors of some of the fiscal units, they were uh, benefited with a ridge of amparo that excludes 10 people of the, out of those 16 for the crime of irregularity in the granting of uh, environmental licenses. And that means that they will remain in impunity. 
We also spoke about access to justice. Uh, in Honduras, we've been struggling for that access and we pose the uh, acknowledgement of Copina as a victim in this process because we suffered the consequences of this hydroelectric project and also the impunity towards the masterminds of the murders of our uh, of my mother our uh, comrade Berta Cáceres as to the prior consultation, which we have been talking about for several years, we do not have new information as to that as to that regard. There was an attempt to rule a protocol that poses that the opinion of indigenous communities not determining to the development of an hydroelectric project and that creates more conflict for the indigenous communities and that concerns us a lot that is what i can add to the uh, questions that have been made thank you very much Thank you, Berta. You have 30 seconds left. I don't know if you would like to close with this, but otherwise you have 30 seconds. Thank you, President. Germán, would you like to say something regarding your intervention? I just want to make a short comment regarding what the representative said regarding the possibility of dialogue to discuss mining concessions. I just would like to say that when we talk about conversations and dialogues, we have the criminalizations of the leaders first, uh, because they are the ones that are uh, advocating against these projects. So in order to be able to have a conversation with the government and with those involved with the concessions, we need to start first with the suspension of all these fiscal uh, requirements that are to which uh, our leaders are subjected to. Thank you. Now I would like to give the floor to the state. They will have 12 minutes. I insist, if you cannot provide us with all the information, now you can send information in reader, written. Thank you, Mother President. We need to highlight some aspects. And one of them is regarding the importance and the advancement towards transparency in the state. Uh, there was a question regarding the resolution of Institute of Access to Public Information. We would like to say that is a resolution from October 25th, 2019, it rejected the classification of research information regarding the process or of granting mining concessions. The resolution also guarantees the access to public information uh, for indigenous communities and other stakeholders. Also, we would like to say that in 2019 and 2020, the private sector and the ministerial sector have exhausted all the measures and have followed public policies and have followed guiding principles and in the area of human rights. We also would like to highlight that we have adopted uh, prevention measures and reparation measures and non-repetition measures. Regarding the investigations, Due to time restraints, we have been very specific with information, but it's important to say that uh, we should mention some of the investigation provided by the National Direction of Police in regarding the murder of Mr. Antonio Mejia Rodriguez. We have detained three suspects and they have been uh, submitting or their cases have been submitted before the competent court. Regarding Mr. Vasquez, we have four or, uh, arrest orders 
and three of the suspects are already in prison for other crimes. And regarding the case of Mr. Molina, we are investigating and we are uh, recording some calls regarding this, those, that case. In addition, regarding the case Wapinol, yesterday, we issued, uh, there was a legal resolution or ruling in relation to one of the environmental human, uh, environmental human rights defender. Uh, the case was from 2018. And the ruling is favorable, uh, was favorable and the defender is now has been released. Regarding the investigation, we have requested reports to the Office of the Public Prosecutor, and we will be sending the reports regarding these cases to the commission. Also, we would like, I would like to give the floor to the Secretary of Energy. She will talk about how dialogue at tables work after the questions of Commissioner Joel Hernandez, and after that, the Under Secretary of Human Rights and Protection will talk about the existing protocols to prevent risks for defenders of the environment. She will talk about the progress regarding the approval of the plan for companies and human rights, and she will discuss some of the specific details regarding some of the questions of the commissioners. Uh, I also would like to know that we have written down all the observations that you have made and all the questions that you have presented and we will be submitting detailed information after the hearing. Thank you. Thank you for giving me the floor. As a state, we recognize there have been a pros a proceedings that are not done adequately and we will grant preparation measures. And that's why in my previous intervention, I, measure, I mentioned all the measures of the secretary, secretariat that was recently created. That was one of the measures that the government adopted in order to bring some order to the energy sector. Regarding energy policies at a national level, we have these strategies under a methodology based on consultation. We are carrying out several training workshops in the communities. We have dialogue tables due to the pandemic. We uh, suspended all the in-local visits in the communities, but however, we have established advisory committees, and we have inv invitations to all the representatives that we have identified and that are accredited at a national level, um, and that include members of civil society, of academia, of NGOs, and also international cooperation agents that should be observers. I also see that there are some notes that have been sent to Masvida and to Copin in order to invite them to participate in these dialogue tables. We know that we have uh, some measures to take before that. And our leader, Minister Ordonez, knows that we need to sit down, that we need to listen to them as a government in order to establish a better relationship and to establish three-party dialogues with these organizations. In addition, we made progress with civil society, for example, with POSE, together with the Secretariat of Human Rights in order to prepare a guide on due diligence for energy projects. Madam President talked about the protocols that we mentioned within the energy sector and autonomous projects. The guide that we are preparing the protocol will not replace the law of prior consultation that needs to be passed in Congress. 
uh, this could not be legally possible. But in the energy sector, the energy sector is the most affected. What we have 160 million dollars that are stopped that are suspended because of the different conflicts and the different proceedings that cannot be carried out as it should be, and the communities oppose the carrying out or the conduction of this project. So as an energy sector, we need to advance because we have national and international commitments because we need to change our power grid and to move towards renewable energies. And we are aware that we need to have more consultation and more participative processes uh, uh, that include all the stakeholders. So the uh, energy sector decided to prepare these individual protocols for projects in the sector of energy. We cannot force other secretariats to do the same, but we do want to have those protocols in the energy sector. And that's why we have these protocols within our sector. Also, we are working on several tools. We also have documented requests and petitions by indigenous communities. We have the notes and we have all the evidence we can send them to you. We have petitions by the communities, for example, the Lenca communities in San Francisco de Palanca. So we as a secretariat, we can support the development of those community projects. We understand the need of these communities regarding uh, power generation. And we also know that we need adequate processes. And therefore, within the energy sector, we are trying to accompany the projects in their communities. And we grant the communities the possibility of, for them to start their own projects. In this regard, we those are the progress that we are making in the R Secretariat. We will continue sending all the information regarding prior consultation and all the things that we have been covering today. Thank you very much. Thank you. First of all, I would like to thank the uh, special rapporteur on economic, social, cultural, and environmental rights of the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights for her offer to provide technical cooperation. Thank you, special rapporteur. Also, we would like to say that with regard to the plan uh, for human rights and companies, we would like to say that Honduras has been advancing in spite of the pandemic to create a multi-actor or multi-party plan in order to include a human rights perspective in the context of company activities. And we also have a program that is called Pro Rights that belongs to the European Union. We will continue taking the necessary measures to build the plan. That is what I can report so, now, so far. We have had several actions and we can inform about these actions to the commission in the future. And regarding the protocols and the mechanisms that exist to prevent risk with a differentiated approach and with a gender approach, we been working with LGBTI persons uh, as Commissioner Piovesan has said, in order to prevent attacks against human rights defenders of those communities. Due to time constraints, I will send this information in written to the Honorable Commission. We are doing a targeted job. We are working in these protocols and we want to work with a differentiated approach or with a gender-based approach for the protection mechanisms. Thank you. Finally, the states would like to thank the Honorable Commission of uh, Human Rights and the petition organizations for their permanent interest to contribute to improve the situation of human rights of the population of Honduras. Thank you very much. Thank you to the representatives of the state. Thank you to the civil society organizations. We would like to thank all the information that we received so far in this hearing. We repeat that if you would like to send us more information in written for us, that information will be very important. And especially regarding the sensitive issues that we have discussed in this hearing, we wish you the best, take care. 
and we will stay in touch and we'll be continue discussing and talking. And as Commissioner Joel Hernandez said, we hope that civil society organizations are able to uh, establish a dialogue with the state. Thank you very much and have a nice day. Thank you, goodbye.